Hello. Today we're in the sixth activity of the Conditional Code chapter in Learn to Code 1. And this, this uh, name of this activity is called Boxed In. And in Boxed In, uh, the instructions here say it's a challenge and we're supposed to factor our code well with conditions, functions, and loops. Okay, what does this word well mean here? Uh, factor your code well. Um, well, uh, one thing we know is we want to just sort of keep doing what we're doing with functions, uh, conditions, and loops, meaning if we have some pattern we can identify, we want to put that pattern in a loop if we can. Uh, if we have some idea that we can, that say, has a lot of different details in it, but we want to be able to collect that idea into one grouping of idea and make an abstraction out of that, uh, then we want to do that and put the, put that uh, all those details in a function so we don't have to think about the details anymore. We can just call our abstract idea. And conditions uh, means, you know, if we have more than one thing to do at one particular place, we can use our if statements to take care of those things. Okay, so let's take a look here at our uh, at Bytes uh, world. And uh, if we look in here, uh, I see a good mix of gems and some switches. Uh, I think it's a good idea here, maybe even before we write any code, let's run it again and see if this gets set up the same way each time. We don't want to be tricked and take care of just gems in some places and just switches in other places if they're going to randomly show up as gems or switches um, each time we run. So let's run this one more time. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, now some of the gems have now become switches and some of the switches have now become gems. One other thing, let's run this again. One other thing I noticed here is that the white wireframes, the places where gems and switches show up each time, form a square around byte. Okay, they don't ever, uh, the gems and switches don't ever show up on the middle square where byte is now standing. They just keep showing up all around byte. Okay, so that gives us an idea of sort of a main idea that we want to do is maybe get on this outside square here, get on the outside square, and if we can get on that outside square, maybe over here, start in this corner, then we can just sort of walk around the outside square and pick up gems and toggle switches whenever they appear. Okay. So let's start with that. We might have to change that, but that's a good game plan. We'll go over to a corner. In fact, let's just do that now. Let's go over to a corner. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, we're going to move forward. Let's go over to this corner right here. So move forward, turn right, and move forward. And that will have us facing this cliff here. So if we turn right one more time, we'll be facing down the row of three. Uh, while standing in this corner here. Okay, now we could put this in a function here. This is just really what we're doing here is we're just moving ourselves over into the corner. Um, but it's okay like it is, but if I would like to still um, make a note to myself that all these four commands are doing are moving us over to the corner, I can use what's called a comment in Swift. Okay, a comment it's just you do two forward slashes like this, slash, slash, and you say something, whatever you want to do, a message to yourself. Okay, move byte to the corner. Okay, that little message to ourself is just going to uh, tell us what this, these lines of code are doing. Okay, this is not actually being run by the computer when you say run my code these are skipped. Comments are skipped. They're just notes to yourself. Okay, The code that's run are these four commands right here. This one, anything that starts with this slash slash are just skipped by the computer. Okay, But this does make it easier for us to see what is this section of the code doing. It's moving byte to the corner. Again, it's a form of abstraction. right? We don't now have to think of these details in here. We've written a comment along with these four lines of code to tell us that that's moving byte to the corner. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and do that here. We're not picking up any gems or toggling any switches here. We're just going over to the corner, 
And uh, when we get over the corner, let's get a game plan for how we want to walk around. Okay, there. He's sad, but he shouldn't be sad because he's in a good place to do some, some good work. Now, as we go around the corner, um, as we go around the corner, we're going to want to be toggling switches and picking up gems if we need to, right? Just like we've done in the past, we're going to want to, as we, as we step on every one of these tiles, we're going to want to check it and see if it's uh, on a gem and we'll collect it, or if it's on a switch, a closed switch, we'll toggle it. So let's go ahead and uh, make a function that does that. We know we're going to want to have this abstract idea of each time we're on a tile, we want to clean it up. By cleaning it up, it means um, toggle the switch or pick up the gem. Okay. So let's call this funk. I think in the past we've called this uh, collect or toggle. Okay, collect or toggle, and this is just asking. We don't have to do, if there's nothing on that tile, we don't do anything, but if we are on a gem, if is on a gem is true, then we are going to, uh, say, collect the gem. Okay, uh, otherwise, else if is on a closed switch, then we are going to want to, and I messed this up here, this should be a closed space there. Else if we're on a closed switch, then we want to toggle the switch on. Okay, and let's get rid of that extra curly brace. Okay, there's our nice abstract idea, which is just if we're on a, if we're on a tile, we want to check it and clean it up of gems and clean it up of switches. All right. So, uh, now we've got that ready to go. Now it's a simple matter of how are we going to walk around this square here? Okay, well, it looks like maybe we want to visit these three, these three uh, tiles here. And if we do that, then we can visit these three tiles here and do this, and then visit these three, three tiles here, and then visit these three tiles on the back row. Okay, so maybe it makes sense for us to write a function that visits three tiles and cleans them up. All right, so func, um, that will be like a side of a square. So let's write this up on top here even before we do anything else. Func uh, clean up side of a square. Okay, clean up side of a square. And we said this is going to do three things. It's going to move forward. Uh, oh no! Actually, we better clean up the uh, we better clean up the tile that we're on first. Okay, so collect or toggle will clean up the uh, tile that we're on, and then let's move forward, and then let's clean up that tile that we're on. Collect or toggle. Then let's move forward to the last one. And then let's collect or toggle uh, that last space. Now we don't want to move forward here because we're on the third square of this row. If we try to move forward, we'll fall off the cliff. Uh, so we are going to want to uh, probably just stop there. And then maybe in our main program, we'll uh, turn to the right before going on. Okay. So uh, that's clean up side. Okay, so that's the next thing we want to do in our main program. We're right here. We want to clean up this side now. So I'll say clean up side, clean up side. Now we're ready to turn right, turn right, and we're ready to clean up the next side. Okay, clean up side. Okay, and then we can turn right and then clean up the next side, and finally turn right and clean up the back row there, clean up side. Okay, so that should really do it. Um, did anybody, uh, as we were doing this, think, oh wait, there's something a little bit wrong here. There's something a little bit wrong. Did anybody see that? Okay, I'm gonna draw a picture here 
that shows you what clean up psi does. And I'm going to circle the squares that bytes cleans up in every clean up side. Okay? So let's circle these three because he cleans up these three. He does three collector toggles there. Then he does these three here. Then he does these three here. And finally, he does these three here. Okay. Do you see how if we write our code like this, we're actually um, cleaning up uh, some the corner tiles more than once? Each time we're on a corner tile, we're actually cleaning it up twice. Okay. So really, uh, thinking about this a little bit, really what we actually need to do, clean up a side doesn't need to do this last collect or toggle. It just it, it, it can just move to the last one and be ready because the next time, so I deleted it in clean up side here, because the next time when we clean up side, it's going to start with the collector toggle that will be handling that case. Okay? So now what we're doing, I'm going to redraw this now. Now what we're doing with each of our clean up sides is we're doing these, 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 and these here. All right. We won't be repeating any tiles. We won't be cleaning, calling cleanup. Uh, we won't be calling uh, collector toggle twice on the corner uh, spaces anymore. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works. I also see that there's a possibility we've got some repeating code in here, right? Which is probably a good uh, good candidate for a for loop. But let's see if this works now, and then we'll. Uh, We'll, we'll fix that in a minute if, if this is all working fine. Okay, he's moving himself, a turn right, moving himself to the corner. Now he called collector toggle, move forward. Collector toggle, move forward. Now he's calling collector toggle, move forward. Collector toggle, move forward, a turn right. Clean up side is a collector toggle, move forward. Collector toggle, move forward, clean up side. Collector toggle, move forward, collector toggle. It says, oops, you completed the puzzle, but you forgot to include a for loop. Let's see if we can do it here by uh, including a for loop instead of these right here. Okay, so in here, let's go ahead and make a for loop right in here. For i in 1, 2, 4, because we're doing this sequence clean up side and turn right each time. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, do that only four times, clean up side, turn right, and we don't need these anymore. There we go. Now uh, we're sort of ready to go here. We have just a short uh, sequence of commands that move us to the corner, and then we have a single for loop that reads very well. It says, for each of the four sides, we're going to clean up that side and then turn to the right. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and run this just to be sure, and I'm going to run it by stepping through my code. All right, here's the comment that says move byte to the corner for these commands, which move them to the corner. Now, i is 1 in our for loop. We're cleaning up a side, which calls collect gem, move forward, collect gem, move forward. Then we're going down to the second time. In our for loop where i is 2, we turn to the right and we call clean up side. Clean up side says collector toggle, move forward, collector toggle, move forward. Then we come here, we turn right, and a third time through the loop, clean up side, calls collector toggle, move forward, collector toggle, move forward. And then our for loop, we come back to the for loop, we turn right, and we call for i is equal to 4 this time. We call clean up side, which collects our toggles, then moves forward. Collector toggle does nothing there, move forward. And collector toggle, or move forward, turn right. Okay, so he did it. Uh, great. Um, you know what? I'm thinking this might be fun, uh, what we did last time. How about this? Let's add one thing to our code here just for fun. How about if byte is on an open switch?
let's have him turn around, all the way around, do a 360 degree spin. Okay, so let's make a function that does this. Func uh, spin 360, function spin 360, and all it's going to have is a 4i in 1 to 4, or i in 1 to 4, let's turn left. He's going to spin to the left. Okay, that gets him facing back the way he was. This is just part of uh, just a fun thing to do here. So uh, now in collect or toggle, right, we have a third case here. He can either be on a gem, he might be on a closed switch. We took care of those cases. Let's take care of the case where he's on an open switch too. Else if is on open uh, switch, if he is on an open switch, we're going to do a spin 360. Okay? Spin 360, we'll get called. And spin 360 just does a for loop where he turns left four times. All right, so to watch this happen, we're going to do this one in fast, at least faster here. Let's run it faster and see if Byte spins. Here he comes, he's got one right away. One, two, three, four, there we go. Toggles the switch still. Picks up gems, toggles a switch, here comes a spin, one, two, three, four, good job, bite. Toggles a switch, and so on. All right, nice job. So just to review here today, what we, what we learned here is that we want to, what it means to factor our code well is to break it up into abstract ideas. Like we have an idea of collect and toggle, or all the details in here, once we've got this code written, we don't need to worry about it. We're just going to, you know, deal with whatever treasures are on a certain uh, tile. Um, we've got the abstract idea of spinning 360, and we've got this idea of cleaning up a side. We could have written this in a for loop, by the way, right? We could have easily written this in a for loop. We could have done this for i in 1 to 2, because it's a repeating bit of code. We could take this. Bring it down here and wipe this out. That's perfectly fine. Would we'll do the same thing. So clean up a side just takes care of two, two out of the three sides, and then we're going to turn right each time. So our main program, after we move Byte to a corner to get him set up, is we have a simple for loop that just says clean up each of the four sides, and in between cleaning up a side, we turn right. Okay. The other thing we learned is a comment. Okay, This comment right here, slash slash two forward slashes, says we can write a message to ourself or anybody who reads our program. It's a little message and tells us a little bit about the code we're going to put in there. Okay, So in this little message we say move byte to the corner because that's describing what these four commands are doing here. Okay, We could put a comment here just as well. We might say something like uh, collect, toggle, and spin all the way around the outside square. Okay? And that would leave a little message for us that that's what this little bit of code is doing here. Again, this is not being run. When we run it, uh, the, the, the sequence of commands are skipping right over that. Um, but it's just a little note to ourselves. Okay. Good job, everybody. We'll see you next time.